Thank you. Is this on? You can hear me? Henry, thank you for painting the world as it is, not as some of us would like to think about its state to, of today. Um, while you guys are getting to microphones with questions, I want to ask one of my own. I keep hearing talk about the uh, tunnel system that will run under the Bering Sea one of these days, connecting eastern Russia with northwestern Alaska. Is that in the, in the real purview, or is that in fantasy? Um, sorry. Real purview. I think the Belt and Road's 2049. Yeah. So some, sometime between now and 2049. But I think if you're talking about the nearest term change, it would be Latin America, Caribbean. And so, if you will, if when, when you first saw the Xinhua map, there was no LAC on that map. And in the last... Uh, 20 months, 16 countries from Latin America, and the, Latin America and the Caribbean have signed up for the BRI. That's astonishing. Okay, but you don't see us getting connected at the top of the world. Well, I, I would say it slightly differently. I've, if you want to have some fun sometime, I would look at how to build a road around the world. Okay. And, and if, you look at, if you look at that carefully as an engineer, you would see where it goes. Well, I, no, I've heard serious people say it goes under the Bering Sea because yes, the spans between each of the Diomede Islands and the respective coastlines are no longer than the span under the English Channel. That's not the difficult part. There are two difficult parts. One, connecting Africa to uh, Gibraltar, and the second difficult part is actually in, uh, in uh, Central America. So th that's, not okay. a, that's not a difficult part you're talking about. All right, well... That gives us plenty to think about. Where are questions? Do I see any out there? Right here, sir. Thank you. My name is uh, Kai Jul Petersen from uh, Denmark. Uh, do you see uh, the competition between land transportation on, on the uh, railway lines uh, and the sea lines? Uh, how would that evolve? First question. Second question. Do you see the BRI? initiative also including space, like satellite systems, satellite communication systems, etc. Wow. So the answer to your first question is the original crossing by rail was 26 days. Last year it was 12. They want to get it to 10. Not so bad. That's a lot of improvement. Uh, on sea passage, uh, China is a, at a huge disadvantage to the world because so much just has to be shipped in terms of energy which is why Guadar is where it is. It's going to take a while before Guadar is fully functional. But I think what you've seen here today, that's helpful. Yes, both rail, as you've seen, high-speed rail across it, and also shipping across the top as the, as, the earth, as the ice melts. So they're looking at both of those. China still remains at about an 8% uh, um, cost disadvantage to logistics, which, again, I go into tomorrow in a, in a workshop rather than here. And space, is there a third dimension? Well, the next dimension is the Belt and Road becomes digital. Uh, it, it will be in the cloud. That's the first step in the cloud. So I, I had this discussion with the chairman of a Chinese university who was stunned when his students all agreed with me. Uh, but yes, the, the, the Belt and Road will be in the cloud, which is why um, they are delighted that the U.S. government sticks with its 6G because they can't do 5G, and as long as they don't let release 5G, that there's all that data to be able to build a digital Silk Road. Hmm. Okay, that's a conversation unto itself. Is there another question? Because that one has too long an answer, I suspect. <laughs> yes, gentleman right there. Uh, good morning. Richard Benville, mayor of Nome, Alaska. Good morning, uh, Richard. Good morning, Alice. Um, how does, in this huge picture you just painted, very exciting, how does tourism, what does, role does tourism play? We have seen a huge increase in transits, uh, both the northern route as well as Northwest Passage, and eventually we'll have the transpolar. Can you give us some thoughts on that? Is that a good thing for industry and for the world, or is that a bad thing? Sorry, I don't believe in the word good or bad, <laughs> or, and I don't believe in should. So I could just talk about numerical. So numerically, um, many countries have built their co economies, if you will, around tourism. So if you will, Oman has been built, rebuilt around, uh, uh, if you will, the, the eco uh, economy in Oman, which is much stronger now and diversifying away from energy, its first move was tourism. 
many places in the Caribbean for some of tourism. Um, I can say that the, the residents of Barcelona and the residents of Venice are pretty fed up with seeing so many Chinese tourists. It's been so successful. So I think it depends on the country and how far it's and attracted. How, and how many people. And how many people. Japan, I think, is delighted to have so many Chinese tourists. It depends until something happens with Japan or Korea, and then they tend to go away. So it depends. Okay. Mead. Henry, thank you for your presentation. Um, question about uh, Eurasian railroads. Uh, do you believe, what do you believe will be the major European port for northern shipping? Uh, is it going to be Kirkenes? Is it going to be Murmansk? Uh, and can you talk about the competition between the several northern ports that want to bring in cargo to distribute into Europe? I wish I knew the answer to that question. Uh, they're all, are, are they're all jostling for position, right? Kirkenes would love to have it. Uh, Murmansk would love to have it. There's loads of them. Um, I think Zeebrugge is now, now the choice for the time being. So I'm, I'm not sure who ultimately gets those, uh, wins those. I do think the ports along the Baltic will do rather well. I think you want a real estate play. We do a commercial, sorry. Uh, that's a nice little real estate play. Okay, there's a as we would say, a non-answer, but that's well, a good the, answer. And, because and just, just a quick comment. Is the, is the difference in rail size in Russia versus Europe a factor? No, they're working on, there is a difference, as you know, that's what Horgos is about, right? If you will, to make that transition. Um, and I can't remember, I, should, I need to know this because I have to present on this point on the 6th of November. I'm not sure where Rail Baltica fits on that. I should check. Yes, okay. I, I think it addresses that. Sorry. Last question, way in the back. Gentleman with your hand up. Thank you. My name is Rabkel Kislason. I'm local here in Iceland. What would you recommend for the Icelandic government with respect to policy of the BRI initiative? Should Iceland participate or not? And what are the pros and cons for Iceland? As I said before, I don't do politics and I don't do should. But um, I, would, I would think that, um, so the BRI started with 65 countries in 2013. It now has 136 signatures, country signatures, 168 total. And by the way, Australia hasn't signed, but Victoria in Australia have signed. So there are only 195 in the United Nations. So those are the numbers. Um, um, I, it's hard for me to say. I think it depends on where you're, <laughs> you're going to say it's a non-answer, but I think it depends on what you want. Um, I don't think you have to be a member of the BRI to get the benefits of it. India's not a member of the BRI, and, and so far this year, there's been more investment by China into India than there has been any other country in the world. Um, Brazil is here this morning. Brazil is not a member of the BRI, and they're, they're contributing 66 million tons of soybeans to China's 89 billion tons they need this year. So they're not a member of the BRI, but yet they're still certainly helpful to China in the, in the current situation. So I don't think you have to be a member. I think there are advantages to being a member, but like any club, but I don't think you have to be a member. Well, that was actually an answer. So thank you oh, for sorry. that. <laughs> okay, I'm afraid we're out of time, but Henry, thank you for all the food for thought. You've, you've, you've provoked a whole new conversation. Thank you Thanks very much, again. thank you.